Hello and welcome to my retro watches. So uh, I've been reading your comments on various videos and there seems to be uh, a lot of you asking, well, not a lot of you, but quite a few of you asking about Russian watches and have I looked inside a Russian watch? Do I own any Russian watches? And the answer to that is, well, no. Uh, but it did ring a bell in my head that I did buy a Russian watch last year. So August 2019, I was on holiday and uh, I was on eBay and I bought this watch here, which I believe is pronounced Pobeda or Pobeda, uh, which is Russian and apparently it stands for victory, according to my wife who does speak a bit of Russian. So the question will be, is it going to be a victory for me? Because right now it's not running and uh, I have no idea why it's fully wound. Um, so hopefully it's just gumped up or something. I have not, well, not knowingly taken the back off, but we'll see. So this cost me five UK pounds plus one pound 97 post. Here's a picture of the um, listing, which I took at the time. Um, so we will dismantle this watch. We'll find out what's going wrong. We'll reassemble it and see if uh, it's worth the five pounds that I paid for it. Uh, considering the Mumbai special watch that I did in my last video cost me 12 pounds and that turned out and got a, a Swiss movement inside. Um, I wonder what we get for five pounds. Um, who knows, but let's find out. We'll cut to the bench in a moment and uh, we'll have a closer look at this and take it apart and reassemble it. So without further ado, let's hop on to the bench. So here we go, you get a better, closer look at the watch. And uh, I just liked the um, font, to be honest with you. I liked the way the numbers were written on it and uh, it had the classic um, seconds hand on a subdial, which is always rather nice. Uh, though as it's arrived, hopefully you can see that on camera, The uh, it's acrylic crystal and it's sort of, I don't know what you call that, it's kind of cracked but not cracked, so it's just sort of stress fractured really. So that'll need replacing and hopefully I've either got one of these in stock in some crystals that I own or I'll be able to buy one. The joy of course of acrylic is it's always really really cheap so uh, I don't really want to put too much effort or money into this particular watch but uh, it'll be good for this video. So um, as I say it's fully wound and um, it doesn't want to run at all as you can see. So we'll figure that out as we go along, as we strip it down, perhaps we might actually see the um, problem. So here we are with the uh, back off, and uh, as you can see, it is a mechanical movement and there are some jewels in place, so it can't be too bad. Um, not the most prettiest of things, but then for this money, I'm not expecting anyth anything of any great uh, quality. Um, it's interesting really it's got these i thought these the movement clamps but it seems to be that that is attached to the part underneath which possibly has the dial on and it sort of tucks under the recess of the case here so it might be a bit more interesting to try and get it out uh, the first thing i'm going to have to try and do is of course let the power down off the mainspring and um, to do that i first of all need to make sure i've got a screwdriver that is going to fit properly and because I haven't got another camera rolling uh, you might not see this but the, 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 obviously the idea is if you've not been able to do this before is to try and wind this uh, this is the barrel underneath here to try to wind this enough that the click here gets out of a position and then I can move it out of the way with a pair of tweezers and then let it down uh, you can either let it down by holding the crown um, or you can let it down by holding the screwdriver. And as the moment I've just done that, as you can see, it's span into action. So that's interesting. So if I let the power off, it stops again. Hmm, okay, so that's a good sign then. That's the first bit of life we've seen already. Hmm. 
However, I just can't seem to get the ratchet far enough round. That's interesting as well. So not off to a very good start. Um, it seems strange that, that doesn't turn uh, far enough out the way. Let me have a closer look. Um, so just bear with me. Okay, it seems that if I try to wind and hold it, I get a better um, position to move this now out the way. This is a bit tricky, it's like I need a few hands. And ironically, the mainspring, there we go, is now winding down. Trying to control that, but uh, not very successfully. But there we go. There is no power left in that, so we're pretty safe now to move on to try and get it out of the case. And the first thing to do is to remove the stem. And the stem, I was just seeing if it was a screw, but it's not. So we should be able to just pull the crown, press this in. Yeah, there we go. One stem. And then it's a case of figuring out how the movement comes out. So these are strange, this. I've not seen this sort of setup before. It looks like you would have some case clamps here, but um, no, just this, just this setup. There we are. That's just a, a movement ring. Okay, interesting. So now, there we go. And you know what? That dial looks like it's in pretty good condition. Uh, there's no real blemishes on it. There's something there, but I think that's just yeah, just a bit of bit of rubbish. So I'm quite happy with that. So okay, we can um, put the crown back in and position the hands ready for removal. So to remove the hands, I'm going to use. My hand levers, these are Horotech ones and the size is 2.5 millimeters. Now, I've used everything before, the Presto tools, I've got another tool that's not dissimilar and I've had various results with them, but one day I actually damaged uh, a hand with the Presto tool. The hand was very stiff to come off and the leverage actually bent the hand around the, uh, the you know, where the hole is and uh, I was pretty distraught. So I went out and bought these and they have been my go-to ever since. They're so much better, so much more control. Highly, highly recommend these. And if you do want to buy them, I do have a link to these on my website, on my tool page. Uh, there's a link below in the description to that should you want to purchase them. I'm not selling them personally. It's just a, an Amazon and an eBay affiliate link for those. So just very gently get them underneath. It's quite difficult to do with my camera in the way. They are on really tough. Now, uh, I don't like that, so I'm just gonna do that off camera close to me. Again, I'm reaching a bit and I don't wanna ruin this dial before I've even started. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, you have to excuse me there, guys. Uh, that was a hell of a struggle to get those off, um, but they're off all the same. So, bit of a relief there. Uh, I'm just seeing in the light as well, it does look like the, um, there's some marks on the dial there, but. There we go. Right, so um, now we will remove the dial and we'll start the um, disassembly and hopefully we'll find some of the problems. So um, I have to excuse my fingers. I should be wearing finger cuts, um, but I'm not going to do it for disassembly. And clearly we've got some dial screws here. I can't believe the Russians would be doing anything particularly different uh, in the way they assemble their watches. Uh, however, I guess we'll find out, won't we? 
as we go down into the movement. Okay, so the dial has just dropped off quite literally, so I'm going to move that somewhere very safe and then we can have a closer look at what we've got here. So some basic keyless works there and um, a removable dual setting as well. So I'm going to put this in the movement holder and we will start the disassembly and I guess I'll just um, chime in if I see anything particularly interesting. Um, so here we go. So it looks quite interesting how the um, setting lever spring here is um, loaded. Further investigation is required. So it seems it's sort of sprung onto something here. And um, yeah. At this stage, oh, there we go. Just a case of lifting it up and it comes off complete with a wheel that should be, of course, sitting in there. That's the minute wheel, which would have been on there. And it's actually, you can't see it here, possibly, it's got some wet oil. So, interesting. In the case back itself, there is no uh, service marks that I can see. So either someone's been tinkering with it, uh, or this is the original oil. Um, hard to say, isn't it, really? Okay, well, we'll press on anyway. We've got a spring there, I can see, loading the yoke. So we'll be a bit careful about that. Okay, that's a uh, dial side complete, fairly 
straightforward setup uh, as I would expect. Um, so we'll move on now to the dial side, uh, to the movement side, sorry, and we'll have a look inside there and see what goes on. Right, here we go uh, on the movement side, and um, let's get started. So we're going to remove the uh, balance. It's the most obvious thing to come off first. It's the most delicate, and I don't want to run the risk of damaging that whatsoever. There's a convenient little slot there to uh, lever it off its post. Still doesn't want to come out. There we go. Okay, so now we will start at the um, all of the barrel works that is pretty stuck in there Let's see if the ratchet wheel that doesn't want to come undone either Be careful, there'll be a spring under here somewhere, and typically that won't want to come out because I haven't undone this. So you can't see because my hands, uh, but the one with the three slots. Is always an opposite thread so you've got to make sure you don't tighten that because if you do you'll run the risk of shearing the head from the thread so we'll just move that crown wheel there and as usual they are in two pieces uh, as you can well it's not going to demonstrate for me now but that bit comes out okay now um, I'm now worried that I've undone that and I can't do the ratchet wheel so I'm going to just screw that back in to be sure I really don't want to mess things up I like to think I know a little bit I don't know a lot but uh, certainly want to cock things up on camera So there we go, we can now remove that. And good old Rodico hopefully will come to the rescue, yes. And then the click, which again still worries me. Uh, on movements like this, hand wind movements, these have always got a spring. And when I'm going into the unknown, as we are now, um, I like to think I can see that spring. Yeah, well that's come off. And the spring, that's interesting if you can see that there. The spring is actually here. Um, I don't know whether it should, should be one piece, I don't think so. Uh, but I'm going to leave it like that for now, so when I have a closer look in a bit, I can get my bearings as to how it all goes back together. And typically, the moment I've done that, it's decided to show itself. So, uh, there we go. I'll have to figure that, route, that out on rebuild. It can't be too difficult. It can only go in one way or the other. Okay, so now that's done. We should be able to remove these three screws and take this train bridge off. And if you're wondering where I'm keeping all the parts, incidentally, I've got this yellow tray, which I always use. I've got a few of these, come from Cousins UK. 
They're only uh, three pounds, I think, something like that. And they are absolutely brilliant because you can put loads of parts in and you don't lose them. So let's take the uh, train bridge off. So far, I've not seen anything, or not spotted anything that would be causing the stoppage. But it could be just gunk in the uh, pivots there. That said, it could be at the bottom of the barrel, even. Um, given when I put some pressure to take the power out, it did try to run, didn't it? So, wrong screwdriver. A little tip is always try and drive the screws out with the appropriate size screwdriver. If you use a lesser size, then you do run the risk of it slipping. Um, and slipping can sometimes lead to disaster, as I found out on many occasions with a slip, and then it goes into the, the watch and damages another part. So again, just teasing that off. And again, wet oil. There's a lot of it, as you can see. And that is there, so... Strange. It's like somebody's um, attacked the where the keyless works was here, and it sort of all ran into it. Well, onto the onto the main plate there. So that's uh, interesting in itself. Of course, can't get the uh, the fourth wheel out here until we remove this bridge also. So I'll do that now. Just looking at those jewels, they look okay. So now we can see the train assembly and the standard setup, really. So we should be able to remove these quite easily. This is the one here, it will drive the uh, second hand, and that's got some very delicate pinions on it. I don't know if you can see that there ultra fine very easily to damage those i would think uh, but again i'm not seeing anything so let's see if we can remove the barrel the barrel's obviously showing some grease here no, no not really there is a bit of gunk in the threads sorry in the teeth not the threads just around here somewhere um, I don't think that would be enough to stop it hard to say okay so we just got the escape I don't know where that's going to come out yeah sometimes they don't pallets in the way so just the pallet bridge and the pallet fork and we are disassembled a little bit more there we go a little slot there quite handy very elaborate setup and there's the, the pallet fork which I can't get hold of there okay so we are now completely uh, disassembled. Interestingly enough, it has got some uh, coding here. So this will be, I guess, uh, the movement reference number. Uh, so any of you guys that are out in uh, into Russian watches out there might recognize that, might be able to tell me a little bit more. Um, 
I don't know how many joules this is, possibly 17. Don't think it said anything on the dial. No, it didn't. Uh, so I could either count them up or just take a guess. So into the cleaning machine it goes. And if you watch the Mumbai special, I did a nice little montage there. Um, so why not do that again? That was a bit of fun. So off we go to the cleaning machine. Okay, well, I just thought before we went to the clean machine, I'd show you the main plate, and hopefully that's coming through. There's quite a bit of gunk, certainly around all the jewels, some old dried oil, basically. And this one especially has some sort of fibre there. And um, it looks like it's been there a long time. Perhaps something like that can be the cause of the stoppage. Who knows, but obviously it's in dire need of a clean and hopefully a clean will sort the problems out. So let's chuck it all in the machine and see what gives. Okay, welcome back. So now we're on to the build itself. And uh, this part of the video is gonna be uh, a bit of on the bench here and a bit of on the microscope, depending on how we get to uh, get the train in its pivots and things. Um, I've got no crib sheet to work from, so I'm just gonna work blind and oil where I think is appropriate. Uh, I've laid all the parts out as I normally do, certainly for a video, and this is what it looks like on a still photograph. Uh, not very arty at all. I know uh, uh, Mark from the Watch Repair uh, Lessons channel um, is very artistic on how he lays out all of his parts, but I am not. <laughs> I just bung them out together so I know where where they all are. Um, now also I uh, open the barrel to have a look into the uh, mainspring and you know, here's a photo again. It looked really clean in there. I was quite surprised. Um, lots of fresh oil. So my assumption is that somebody has been in here um, not too long ago, I think. Somebody maybe have used this for practice themselves. Um, but clearly, uh, someone's had a go. I think that's all I can say, really. Uh, wet oil is an indication. So anyway, I'm going to stop rampanting on and let's crack on with the build. So my idea is to uh, assemble the train uh, first and 
they will be all fitting in their jewels here now this is particularly difficult actually from the angle I'm at um, because again I have to sacrifice uh, where I'd like my head to be for the sake of the camera uh, which doesn't always work certainly on things uh, that I've not built before so these are all nicely uh, jeweled whereas the um, fourth wheel is not and my guess is this one it might be a little bit trickier because I've got to thread it through the uh, jewel. This is the the wheel that the second hand will go on. And yes, again, from where I am, that's quite difficult. So I think we will go onto the microscope now. I'll oil a little bit here and I'll get these lined up better on the scope. Okay, so first of all, my apologies if anything goes out of focus here. I will try and put the focal lock on. Uh, however, I don't think that's going to necessarily work. Okay, there we go. That's seated, but the escape is not. It seems the jaw pivots themselves are, I don't know, to me a little bit either narrow or just a little bit different how they would be on Seiko, which is what I'm very used to. Now I'm liberally going to oil this with D5, whether I should or not is another matter, um, but I feel that that is the best plan of action. And I'm just bringing in the wheel. Trying to get that in the screen for you. Of course, I'm using the other view file or the other IP, should I say? Um, so, what I always see is not always what you will see. But there we go. The train is in place, so we need to gently get the train bridge on there, and then it'll be back on the microscope again just to uh, get the pivots in. So I'll just rest the train bridge on top, and then we'll come straight back to the, micro the microscope. So the uh, bridge like I say is now just roughly rested in place and I've just got to try and gently nudge and I'm just looking for my broken oiler that I use for this sort of job just to try and get everything into its pivots and just would help if the train bridge stayed still that's kind of Now, the professionals, they're able to do this just with a loop. And I find, well, I find that incredible, to be honest with you, that they can do that. struggle a little bit here I feel because you can't apply any force particularly because uh, you run the risk of breaking a pinion escape is becoming particularly particularly difficult and there possibly is a sequence here of which one to do first but uh, now the escape is almost in of course the other ones want to jump out of their seats now as well and then 
I just thought I'd got it all and it all came out so rather than keep filming I'm gonna have to do this uh, now uh, separately could be going on for ages by the looks of it uh, so I'll be right back huh here we go then so five minutes later and I have managed to win the battle so all the pivots are now in and if I just use this oiler to demonstrate you can see that the train there is moving nice and freely hopefully you can see that and it's coming through fairly clear looks like from where I'm sitting it wasn't all that clear uh, so there we go that's great a bit of a relief uh, I didn't want to break a, a, a pinion uh, that would have been an absolute disaster uh, so just quickly all these um, cups here with some um, Mobius 9010 and again not sure how well this is going to come out on the camera there we go they're oiled right okay so that was a bit of fun just messing with that little bridge uh, however here we go we can now get the barrel in and to do that I'm just going to use some molly coat DX grease um, and liberally apply some in there and the barrel hopefully can just slot under the fourth wheel like so great okay I am happy with that and then I'm just quickly going to put some uh, D5 Mobius just on the top of here because now it's time for the next bridge and this bridge should be a lot easier. And it is, because there we go, it is immediately in position, which is fantastic. And we've just got three screws. So I'll just put them in the holes. And then rather than you watch the back of my hand as I screw them in, I will do that off camera now. So now it's time for the uh, click. And I don't know if you remember, but we have this tiny little spring, the uh, click spring. And basically it's like a horseshoe shape, as you can see. And one end is bent up and one end is bent down. The bent down is gonna go in this hole here. And basically as the uh, ratchet, once that's in position, this bit here hooks onto the bit that sticks up so as you're winding it and it clicks that's giving it the resistance that it needs to go back and uh, grip into the teeth of the um i forgot the name of it transmission wheel Is that? no the ratchet wheel beg your pardon so i never like these little springs i mean they're a great idea but they're dead easy to lose and uh always hard to find that hole sometimes for me with my eyesight but I think we're in so the good thing is you don't normally need to hold these in place if you're lucky because it's just it takes the resistance under pressure so there we go so that drops in there and as long as that bits out of the way then we can screw that in safe in the knowledge that we have not lost it just to lose that spring there would completely nap up my build in this video so okay what we can do now is put the ratchet wheel in on the top there put the screw of course this screw is going to wind the main spring uh, so before I tighten it, or before I try and tighten it, I just need to put a bit of pegwood, just to hold the teeth a little bit, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, just to nip up that screw a little bit. So hopefully that's in place, and if we put a little bit of turn in, yep, the train whistles away really nicely. 
So already, I think we're going to be on to a winner. Um, very good indication. The train moves nice and freely. We still don't know what uh, made this watch stop other than possibly just being gunked up. So the next thing to fit is going to be the uh, pallet. And as always with the pallet, I like to do these on the microscope. But I'll just sort of put it somewhere near while we cut to the microscope. Right, so I've just got to now gently persuade that to fit into the jewel. And I think it's in. Yep. Okay, that's in. Uh, so I'll just put the, um, the bridge in place for that, uh, which is quite an interesting little setup actually. So this bridge is it's quite uh, curved. And it's got a couple of location pins and a screw of course. And I'm pretty sure that what will happen is by the time we've got the um, bridge in position like that, the pallet will now be out of position. So guess where we're we going? Back on the microscope. Right, so now will be almost the moment of truth. It's time to put the balance on, and hopefully we might see it swing into action. Certainly will if I put some power into the mainspring, of course. And then should just try to check that the pallet fork, yep. So we've got that uh, moving correctly as it should. Um, I'm not going to oil this jewel. Um, you shouldn't. Well, the trade-off is if you don't oil the uh, pallet jewel, as well the the, the, pi the pivot here, over a time the oil will start to degrade and get a bit sticky, and then it will slow that up. So it's best to leave well alone. Of course, we should really have oiled the escape jewel on the um, pallet itself. And in hindsight, I didn't do that. I kind of I forgot, and I don't think there's service access to uh, to that from underneath actually so i might leave that for now uh, let's just see like i say put the balance on and see if it's going to run And it is, there we go. It's just starting to take some speed there. So let's screw that in first. So it's definitely got some beat and um, I don't know, to me that doesn't look like it's got great amplitude, but then I don't know what the amplitude of this should be. Just going to try and put a bit more power in. Well, there we are with a bit more power uh, in the mainspring. It seems to be um, ticking quite nicely, doesn't it? Let's let's face it. So <laughs> certainly uh, the watch is going to run. Now it has got this strange setup for uh, the jewel on there. And I'm not very good at these. Um, there are two screws either side. And at the moment, I don't really feel I want to do that on film. Um, I've got to do that with a very, very small screwdriver to get to that capsule. And at the moment, I'm just going to leave it well alone. Um, so my apologies if I'm not showing you absolutely everything. Uh, but there are certain limitations to even what I want to do myself. So at the moment... Um, I think we'll flip it over, start putting the keyless works in. Oh, we do need to fit the um, 
the crown wheel, don't we? Which is obviously uh, fits over here. And again, that's quite a high friction area. So I'm going to use some molly coat grease. doesn't seem to be going on the way I want it so maybe it's got a right way and a wrong way how bizarre okay let's try that Remember this is a left-handed thread screw, so it's all counterintuitive. Sorry, you can't see there, I'm just double checking. Uh, but it's not seem doesn't seem to be sitting properly. So I've done something wrong there, so I'll just take that off and reseat it. Right, okay, I've reseated it properly. It just turns out that the, the inner part here, this metal body, uh, must have a taper on it or something because I had it upside down. I didn't notice that, but there we go. It now fits as it should. So we can now flip it over and we can start the uh, keyless works and hopefully that should be a straightforward affair. Okay, we're just on the, uh, the dial side now and that is the shock jewel there for the um, balance. Now I have... Uh, Clean that, took it off and cleaned it, put it back on, removed the balance again and used my automatic oiler. Uh, I'm sorry I did that off camera, but I wasn't that confident about this little thing here. I uh, thought I might lose it and uh, certainly don't want to lose it at this stage, do we? Now also noticed at that point that yes, we do have uh, service hatches there for the pallet jewels. So I had a go uh, once again at oiling the, uh, the exit, which is the one uh, here in the picture this top one here um, now I'm still learning to do this through the um, microscope and through these hatches because before I used to just do it uh, before I put it in the movement uh, but apparently it's supposed to be better to do it while you are looking at it like this uh, but I'm still finding it very tricky your hands start shaking you've tried got to get a little oiler through that tiny hole and touch the jewel uh, so I guess it's just going to be something that through repetition I will get right eventually So anyway, let's crack on and put in all the keyless works and we can then put the dial on and get this thing uh, looking back like a watch So okay, so now we're looking at the um, The fourth wheel or the center wheel Basically the wheel that the hands are going to sit on and we just need to oil the bottom of this because we're going to then fit the cannon pinion. So I'm just going to put some D5. It's a bit thicker that oil and um, it's always a bit of a high friction area. And if I can get hold of the cannon pinion I can fit it. There we go. And while we're here, we can just see there's a, a jewel there. So also that's one of the train. So just uh, 9010 Mobius in that one. And then I'll do the same. He would if I had any oil on the oiler. A little bit on that one. A 
and then you put a little bit on the side of there and then the final one and that should just help with the, uh, the train on this side so let's get fitting there is this little post uh, which will be part of the setting lever that can go in there we will have the minute wheel and then we have these sort of drive wheels for that and equally the one that goes on there make sure they're all meshed uh, then it's a case of trying to remember and it is a case of trying to remember for me how all the uh, keyless uh, went so first thing we'll do is I'll get the crown which is easier said than done of course because everything's running away from me off camera here so we will put in the clutch first and it's got to make sure that we get that the right way around it's got a straight gear on one end and the other end sort of like serrated teeth I don't know how, how else to pronounce it because they engage with this the crown wheel which hasn't doesn't look like it's cleaned very well uh, or it's got some discoloration and Mobius, sorry, uh, not Mobius, um, Mollycoat DX Grease is what I'm going to use just on those teeth because they bind together. So, this is sort of what creates the drive for when you wind the watch. And the outer ring of uh, teeth, like here, engage with the crown wheel on the other side, and that in turn will then wind the whole watch up. So that's going to fit, or it should fit, in here. There we go. And at this point in time, I'm just going to put the stem in as well, just to sort of hold those in position. So next, we have the um, what I think is the setting lever. And again, I'll just put a bit of. D5 on the side of this post here because again there would be some friction going on and as I say I can't quite remember how this went and I'm not going to look back through the video just yet uh, I think it goes there and then we'll have the yoke to go with that and the yoke will have to fit inside the clutch which it is doing so they sort of fit together like that and then we have that really horrible little uh, shepherd's crook spring one of these never particularly uh, fond of these it's got a nice part that it's going to secure around there now normally with these sort of things I have found get the short end in and up against the long part or the recess where it's supposed to sit um, be careful uh, because obviously these things have a tendency to fly so if you're going to put some stress into it which we are uh, one trying to hold it down which I'm going to use this bit of uh, peg wood uh, but failing that I've now learnt to try and get things if they're going to fly to fly this direction because that's the back of my bench and my bench uh, as you know is all sort of encased so there's a good chance if it does fly I'm going to find it because it's going to be on my bench whereas if it comes towards myself it's going to hit my body it's going to go on the floor and there goes another hour and a half of trying to find a really small part so as I say I'm just going to try and hold this in position I'll try and block it from from flying there we go and that's now safely in there and then we have the setting lever spring now the setting lever spring as you can see here bringing it in it's got this bump on the top which 
is going to go the other way and I guess these are the settings here for um, you know whether when it's to wind the watch basically uh, sorry not the wind watch when it when you want to change the the, the time itself so I'm just going to get some molly coat and normally I'll be doing this under the microscope but um, just for quickness really just get a bit of grease in those positions because I think that's where it's going to go and yes so it just needs to be engaged um, but first I'm going to try and get either one or both of the screws just in just a little bit right so I've got the screws loosely in place and I'm hoping that that is just going to find its home which I think it has uh, I'm just going to nip that screw up right okay so I'm pretty confident that's in place and then before we test it we had uh, a little spring well not spring it's like a little retainer isn't it and I can't quite remember how this went but it certainly looks like that was the right way Okay, moment of truth, there we are, so we can see it's turning the wheel, okay I haven't put the uh, the hour wheel on yet, but it certainly appears that the keyless is incorrectly, you can hear that winding now, so I'm actually very happy at this stage, we can bring in the cushion, excuse me for the fact that I haven't got enough finger cots, I've only actually got one finger cot on uh, in part because the ones that I've got are too tight and the other ones that I normally use I haven't got any left so oh, before we drop the hour wheel on I tend to also like to just put a bit of 9010 on the side of the cannon pinion and then we can drop the the hour wheel he says over the top and then the dial washer will go on and we should be nearly home now so just a case of uh, putting the dial on and then see what it looks like so uh, the dial is secure and it's just a case of fitting the hands now and um, then we can enjoy it try and put it back in its case now I have also noticed that the hour hand here sorry the minute hand is a little bit bent and uh, I don't know why that is whether that's just because somebody's not fitted it correctly and it's bent or whether it even bent when I was trying to take it off um, but we'll try and straighten that a little bit and then fit them Just going to push that on a little bit. It has, uh, it is a bit off, but I'm not too worried about that uh, because we haven't got a day date function, so we can tweak it. Now I'm also using. You can't see it very well because of the angle, but I use one of these now that I enjoy. Um, I've only got a cheap version of it but it seems to do quite well at pushing hands on. 
because it's got lots of different um, ends to it. As you can see here, you can choose the right one. Oops. I'm still not too sure when I look at it. Doesn't look right, does it? Well, I'm going to play with this, get the hands on, and then I'll show you rather than spend more time messing around. All right, guys, a little bit of free hand here. We are on the time graph, and we get some quite interesting results there, as you can see. Bit of a snowstorm. Uh, there is a trace, but there seems to be a lot of noise in the background. And then when I, if I just turn this like this to demonstrate uh, dial up, it starts to clean up. And as you can see, the uh, rate is dropping like crazy, uh, but the lines are a lot more parallel. Um, so I wonder what this was. Um, Obviously, I don't know what to expect from a watch of this piece or this calibre. Um, but I put it on the uh, microscope again just to double check and have a look at the hairspring. And I found out that it's actually got a Breguet uh, hairspring. So I'll show you that now. Okay, here we are. And um, let me just see if I can get that a bit better in focus for you. There. So I've never seen a Breguet before. I've only read about them. They're supposed to be for higher... Um, precision uh, so they're in normally more higher end watches I believe they're still used today and it's kind of like an overcoil so where the terminal curve would be on a normal watch would be out here at the end of the stub uh, end of the uh, regulator sorry then going into the stud whereas here it's it's more inside and that last coil is coming up and over the um, hairspring itself and apparently this is to keep um, concentricity if that's the right word of the um, hairspring which basically gives it more accuracy um, so correct me if I'm wrong uh, I've only done a little bit of homework on this uh, just um, so it's interesting to see that in a movement like this I guess when I would have assumed this would have been in a higher caliber so very interesting um, not performing still too great but then I don't again I don't know what to expect I was hoping for some nice cleaner lines uh, maybe it is just because this thing is actually quite noisy it's a very loud ticking watch and perhaps the time grapher is picking up all of the resonance of that noise and is not able to uh, plot it correctly um, the inability to be able to change the beat error uh, certainly for me because it hasn't got a move a, a movable stud uh, limits what sort of regulation I can get but I'll I'll play around with it now and see if I can get it any better but if I can't well so be it the thing is running and it's going to be able to tell the time so that is the main thing isn't it right so let's just cut and I can show you the finished article there we go then guys bit free and again on the camera front and uh, I've regulated and I'm getting a little bit better reading now it still wants to climb as you can see uh, but it's a bit more consistent certainly this way up still have the same problem if I turn it dial up but it is getting better so I could again spend ages tweaking this uh, I don't really think I want to so I just thought I'd show you that I've got a little bit more improvement out of it and I guess if I did persevere I'd improve it even more um, so uh, that's kind of the watch done now so I'll click now to some um, some nice photos so you can see the finished watch
Okay then guys, I hope you enjoyed those uh, photographs of the, uh, the actual finished watch. I've now got it on my wrist and uh, I actually quite like it. Um, I say that just about any watch I try on, I have to say, but no, I quite like the blue dial. I do like the font of the numbers. Uh, the fact that it's working now is uh, a bonus. And of course, I put it on this um, ostrich, but well, it's a faux ostrich uh, strap actually. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a nice little thing to add to my collection. And I've actually quite enjoyed going into this Russian watch. First time into one of them, like I said at the beginning. And uh, I, I liked it. I liked the mechanics of it. It was a very simple thing to take apart and put back together again. There's only a few little tricky bits like that uh, train bridge, for instance, and trying to get all the pivots into it. Um, it's a shame it doesn't run as well as it could do on the time graph. And I guess I could mess around with that for ages and try and figure it out. And maybe I would. Um, the reality is, when am I going to watch wear this watch? Not very often. Um, it'll sit in my box with all the others and uh, be cherished, um, as I tend to wear almost a different watch every day now. <laughs> so um, it'll get a few outings a year, put it that way. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video and you stuck around to the end. If you did, thank you very much for watching. Please give me a like if you enjoyed it. I guess give me a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it, although I don't like those. The thumbs up are good for the Google algorithm and the algorithm generates more viewers to the channel. And if you are a subscriber, please, please click the bell notification uh, next to the subscribe button on the videos because that way you will be notified of any of the uploads that I make in the future as I make them and therefore you'll be able to watch them. So please do that. What's coming next is a very interesting uh, uh, video. I have a watch with a story to tell and uh, I will start filming that very soon so stay tuned for that one. One last shout out of course the Facebook group Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. We are growing ever bigger. It's now 8,300 members in there. All watch lovers, uh, tinkerers, professionals, everything. Come and join the fun. If you're into watches join the group and see what goes on there as well. Thank you guys and I will see you in the next one very soon. Bye for now.